Now, Brother McGarrity, I didn't have him on the schedule to speak because I thought he was just about past going. So we went over, was it Saturday? And we visited with him and Benita, and I said, man, I think you can handle this. Hallelujah. He's so much better because he's on a lot of medication. And just keep him in prayer over this medication. Now you will get your, don't talk yet. Give me a minute. Well, I'll give you mine. Oh, you can't get it on? I'll, I'll get it for you. Or you can use mine. We'll just let you use mine. How that be? Well, maybe you're set up for this one. Hallelujah. Anyway, so I said, well, I'm going to put you Sunday night after our son sings and his group, and you can exhort us, preach to us. And he's got family here. His uh, sister over here, Barbara, LaDonna called me his other sister, and then she got sick today. Carla had gone up north for a, a day or two. She come home sick. She was going to be here too. But they'll all be here. Pray for Carla that she's not getting sick with a cold. She said, I don't know if it's allergies or a cold. And so pray about that. The girls will be here next Sunday night. And I will be preaching. There ain't nobody going to preach the last message in this house but me. Hallelujah. So I hope you can come back every night. We've got exciting things. Brother Thurber will be here tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Brother Webb over here will be preaching. Wednesday night will be our bro own brother, Ray Valentine. Thursday night will be uh, brother Je uh, Gene Jeffrey. And then Friday night will be brother uh, Doug Young. And so we're looking forward to a great week. Different ones are going to be doing some of the music and the worship leading. But Brother McGarrity was my assistant until he got so short of breath and going through so much stuff. You know what amazes me about this man, as many miracles as he's had in his body, and the things that God has brought him through, that we can't see God just go ahead and finish the whole work and raise him up and let him keep on preaching. But he still preaches. You just get around him. You'll hear him. It's my joy tonight to have Brother McGarrity to come. And uh, I don't know how much he'll be able to do because he does get uh, out of breath a little bit. But I know God's going to help him. Yeah, he, he's got his help with him so he can breathe well. So you come on up, Brother McGarrity. Let's welcome Brother Bill McGarrity. Now I'll tell you what I want y'all to do. Just stand up for a moment and stretch. Because you've been sitting for a while. Stretch your muscles and your arms and all of that. Get awake. Just, we're going to... He, oh, he wants his Bible. Okay, that's good. You can sit back down. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to be here. That, that, I'm just so sort of happy to be anywhere. Now, if I say something out of the way tonight, Sister Kinsey has already assured me from experience, once you get past 80, you can say anything. Now, it is a joy that there's someone else, there's some other folks here that I want to mention. I don't see them right now, but. Jackie. Yeah, they didn't, my niece didn't make it. She said she was going to make it. Is Jackie here? And Brad, oh, they're hiding back there. Amen. Now, someone else that I don't see, I pastored them. When all I could do was exhort. I got my exhorters permit. It's either in March of 57 or March of 58. Well, in the early spring of 58, I became this lady's pastor, Sister Nancy Tyra. She was 10 years old then. Now you can figure it out. <laughs> Her dad was... Uh, one of our was the church secretary, treasurer, Sunday school superintendent, just about anything. 
and her mom, they were so faithful. Brother and Sister Robinette were their names. And now someone else very special this year tonight is my wife, Vanita. She keeps me alive. <laughs> Did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. <laughs> A few months ago, we were at the VA, and I was in with the renal clinic, the doc, the kidney doctor. Now, I tell you what all's wrong with me, but I don't want to give the devil any credit. Well, he's been trying to kill me nearly ever since I started preaching. And then I've read over and over and over where Jesus said, the enemy comes to kill and steal and destroy. But he said, I come that you may have life, and that you have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. Now, I've been through a lot. I've been oh, through a lot of valleys. After one of my three strokes, I don't know which one it was, but one of them I couldn't, I lost my voice for a little over two years. I couldn't figure out how to sing happy birthday. But God gave me back my voice one night. Amen. And uh, to give Him the glory. Amen. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so. He looked beyond my thoughts and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died. For you and me, how marvelous the grace that caught my falling soul. He looked beyond my faults, and there were many. He saw my need. He still sees them today. He's real today. He's more real to me now than I can ever remember in my entire life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, it's hard for me not to get excited sometimes. I've already done something I didn't even plan at all. Well, that's good. But the Holy Spirit doesn't always let us know in advance what He's got in mind. But uh, I just want to ask the question, and I, if you don't raise your hand, I'll pray for you. <laughs> How many of you have ever felt like that you just couldn't do anything? You just felt like sometimes when you did do something that no one noticed. Well, I'll tell you something. That's happened to me a lot. But I'll tell you something else. I know in whom I believe. And I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Another thing that I know is that sometimes no one will recognize what we've done. But there's someone else that knows exactly what you've done. He's got a record of it. And you know, when we stand before the Lord, He's not going to call this congregation together and have some kind of a meeting to look at my record. Thank God. It's going to be just me and God. Just me and God. But I was trying to 
learn to sing again after my last stroke. And I couldn't, I had no sense of timing and I had no sense of melody or harmony. But I'd get the Blackwood Brothers or the cathedrals or, or some of those wonderful gospel quartets and I'd put, I didn't have CDs, I put the tape, the little cassette tape, in my old GMC truck. And I'd turn it up just about as loud as I could. And I would just sing along with them until finally I realized that, hey, I'm way behind them. And they're way out ahead of me and I'd turn it off and I'd try to catch up. And if someone had heard this, they would have said, I wish that old man would shut up because he can't carry a tune in a basket. When I was pastoring in South Mountain in 74, 75, I walked in to the Sun Drug Store that they're on Central and Rosier. And one of the ladies that attended our church worked at the soda fountain there, and I'd go and have coffee here. It was just a few blocks from the church. And I walked in there one day, and the manager of the nearby store looked up and said, Preacher, you know I used to wish I could sing. And it dawned on me that as I walked in, I was singing and it wasn't even conscious of it. And I said, oh, is that right? He said, yeah, I sure did. Just said, now I wish you could. So I'm glad you didn't announce I was going to preach tonight. I'm just going to exhort a little bit. And you will, I'm going to read just a couple of verses. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the second chapter of John. Let's start with the first verse. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. They were invited, they attended. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. Don't have any wine. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. Some of these things I just don't quite comprehend or understand. I'll confess to you that I don't. But the verse 5 said, His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Think of that. To the servants. I'm sure there were some of those servants that, well, what are we going to serve water for? They may have questioned that, I don't know. But we know the rest of the story, don't we? Jesus turned the water into wine. Hallelujah. Now there's another verse or two that I want to read over a little later. How many of you ever heard of Saul of Tarsus? Yeah. He was kind of a rascal, wasn't he? <laughs> he helped the coat of those that stoned Stephen to death. And he had a warrant in his pocket going to Damascus planning to arrest all of the Christians and probably trying to get them put to death. And here he says, I'll have to find it. I'm over 80. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus.
Here it is, the last verse. I forgot that it was the last verse. Sometimes I forget what I'm supposed to remember. <laughs> I was I was at the doctor, the renal clinic. Did I tell this while ago? And I was trying to think of something, and the doctor was telling me, and I was trying to relate to him an experience, and I couldn't think of it. And I said, oh, uh, dog, I can't remember. Uh, I guess I'll just have to get me some of that estrogen and take it. <laughs> now, you men may not have caught that, but I'll let you ladies did. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word prevagen. <laughs> so I decided I wasn't going to try either one of them. And it's obvious tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul that was going to wreck havoc of the church. And we could, re I'll just try to remember some of the high points. He was on the road to Damascus, and, he's, and forgive me if I just paraphrase this, but I'll try not to change the meaning at all. There appeared unto him a, a bright light that was brighter than the noonday sun, the scripture said. Yes. And he fell down blind. And he heard a voice saying, Paul, Paul, or Saul, I don't know if it's Saul or not at that point. Why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who art, who art thou, Lord? Well, he had a pretty good idea he wouldn't have called him Lord. <laughs> who are you? He said, I'm Jesus whom thou persecutest. And the Lord told him what to do. And he went on to the street called Straight. And he found out in Isaac's house. And he stayed there, I believe it was three days, and he received his sight. And he was going back then. He made about face and he made all the Hebrews, all the Jews were out to get him. And it says here in verse 33, and through a window in a basket, I was let down by the wall and escaped his hands. You have any idea the significance of that one verse, what it means? It means that you and I have the message of salvation today. It means that he had totally committed from that time on to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wrote over half of the New Testament. He was the one that caused the message of salvation to come to the Western world. Because somebody made a basket. Now they didn't get any credit for it. Their name's not even mentioned. But remember what Mary, the mother of Jesus, said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Whatever. And if you're not sure, you can find it right here. Because the scripture says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I exhort you, got my exhorters from it way back then, I get a chance to use it tonight. I'm exhorting you to do what Jesus yes. says to do. What Mary, the mother of Jesus, said to do, rather. But she was saying whatever he said, and you do it. Now, somebody made a rope. Their name's not mentioned. They didn't get credit for it. And somebody straightens up these seats. Somebody comes down and turns the lights and makes sure the picture's right. I could name them, but I'm not going to. Most of you know. Somebody comes forward and 
receives the offering and they go back and they tabulate it correctly for the records. They don't never get much credit for it, but they are asked to pray over the offering every once in a while. <laughs> you might be tempted to think, I'm no good. I, I, even if I am, they won't even mention me. They didn't mention the one that made the basket either. But I'll tell you, someone that knows, and that's God. God knows who we that basket by name. He knows who made that rope. And the ones that helped the rope, their names are not mentioned here either. Think of it. Maybe you won't get any credit the plants were playing the organ. Whatever you can do, do it. We're coming, as Sister Kenzie said, into a transition time in our experiences of local fellowship of believers. Some of you have to figure out where to go to church on Sunday night if you can find a place. Or where to go on Thursday night or Wednesday night. But I exhort you, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together, as some do. And even so much more as we see that day approaching. I exhort you, and covet you, to pray for my deliverance from this chair, from this heart, oxygen, but I'm 80 to almost 83 years old, and if the Lord takes me home tonight, I'm ready. I said, if the Lord takes me home tonight, I'm ready. Yeah. And it'll be a promotion. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Brother Doug, it'll be a promotion. Yeah. Brother Ray, it'll be a promotion. Everyone else, it'd be a promotion yes. if you know Jesus. Yes. And I exhort you, if you don't know Him, whatever He saith unto you, do it. Do it. I bless you. I love everyone. What a year. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.